This bout originally was going to take place at Polaris 9, but it had to be delayed due to the birth of Uriah Faber's daughter, Callie. We hope everything's going well with her back at home, but very early on, Uriah Faber making this aggressive with strong grip breaks against Nikki Ryan. Hands to the face, very much going to make this a scrap. Yeah, expect Uriah Faber to really take it to Nicky. He wants to get in his head a little bit. He wants to rattle him. He wants to take him out of his element. These guys have trained together before, so they both know what to expect from each other. I actually completely forgot that had happened. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest difference you can make is, is really take them out of their usual frame. Don't make it just another day on the mat. Make it a competition. Really put the pressure on and get a lot of different things going through the head. That's it, Nicky uh, Ryan chasing your eye favor across the mat. We knew he was going to sit to guard early. This is really where he does most of his work. The so question you... is, can he sweep your eye favor? He elevates, though. Can he find a leg through? Yeah. So Uriah is working towards the edge of the mat the whole time, though. Oh, and Uriah's going to get a warning here. Go back. Yeah, he's making it a, a dirty match. He's making it a nasty match. Look to see... Uh, I, I imagine Nicky's going to look to elevate again with that butterfly guard and turn underneath and look, look in for the leg lock here. Yeah, I mean, he, he got your eye favor high up in the air, but your eye clamped his knees together and didn't let Nicky shoot that leg through with that inside control. He really is rocking a glorious tan, isn't he? Just had to say that. It's that Californian sunshine. Yeah, go get out there. So Nicky again advancing forward. And it's amusing just how much he can put someone on the back foot by sitting down and, and yeah. shuffling forward. He does it to so many of his opponents. Just shows you how dangerous he is from the bottom here. But make no mistake, if he manages to knock Uriah back and he gets a chance, he will, he will shoot and come up on his knees and try and drive through on top. Yeah, I, I think actually um, there, there aren't any places that Uriah Faber is safe in this match. If he's underneath... Uh, he's going to be in a tough position for those back takes and when he's on top He's going to be in a tough position for entries to the leg locks. Yeah, Nicky's tried a few times just to come up with like a knee tap um, Off the collar tie uh, You imagine that your eyes base is going to be so strong here though. Yeah, I mean obviously he's got, he's got a pretty extensive wrestling background as well He was a two-time NCAA qualifier back in 2001 and 2002 We've Got a quick shot there of Gary Tone and Ethan Cranston in the corner of Nicky Ryan yeah, you can see how just how thick Uriah Faber's core is as well. Mm. It's a very solid. That seems like years of wrestling. Yeah, Uriah Faber, two UFC Sub of the Night awards and holds the records for most submissions, most wins, and most finishes in UFC bantamweight history. <laughs> Uriah's really just trying to rough Nicky up at this point. Just put hand on the neck, pulling down on the head, See, I was wondering pushing he on the chest. If he was going to get a snap down at any point and actually get a chance to enter a guillotine I don't know if he will I think I think it will be super dangerous yeah if he uh, does because <laughs> it's going to give Nicky the opportunity to come up on the leg yeah I mean Uriah's got a, a fantastic squeeze I mean all those alpha male guys do they practice it a lot and it blends in really well with their style of um, like grappling yeah you see so you, you heard Gary Tonin suggesting perhaps a little bit of knee wrestling to then use that to enter the legs and there you see it coming up to the knee just to wrestle for a moment in order to go back down underneath yeah I, you see that knee tap again just trying to knock your eye favor over I don't, I don't think that's gonna work well having said all of this he you know he's he's doing the more positive work well there's no doubt that Nicky's winning at the moment and and Uriah's playing super defensively but um, you know, we could just have this for the next 11 minutes, really, and, 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 and Nicky would take a decision. I'd be more interested in seeing Nicky try and stand, which is obviously what Uriah wants, allowing Uriah to actually try and wrestle him and see if he can catch something off of those transitions, if this strategy doesn't work after the first, you know, five, six, seven minutes. Well, we're through the first four minutes, and Uriah Faber stands up, and that gives Nicky Ryan the leg entry straight into... He's in big trouble now. cross Ashy. Yeah, this is very deep already. See, he's completely tied up. He's got control of that far leg, too. Yeah. See, if he, see what heel exposure he can get here as he, he's going to bridge into the side of the knee once he goes back on the heel as well. He's got the secondary leg locked up here to stop Faber withdrawing it and getting back to his base. This is, is, that, a is that a straight foot lock on the Yeah, that's the what secondary? he's trying to do is use the, uh, the rear naked choke grip on the secondary leg. Expect, it, uh, expecting if he sees the opportunity to switch and turn that into well, a Well, that, that's it. He can always go to the go back to the leg he's actually got entangled, which is Faber's left leg. 
roll through here. And this is where it's really dangerous for Uriah Faber. He's up on this hip. Yeah, Nikki has so much space now to start the switch and turn this into... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Look, he's going to switch back to that heel hook. No he's... hands anywhere near to defend. Oh, no, this is it. See, bridging in. So Uriah doesn't seem to know exactly what to do in this position. Yeah, he's trying to push that knee off. Rolling again. Stop. Oh, and they're going to have to stop for the edge of the mat. Now, you can't this really stop this in a locked-in heel. <laughs> Good we get from one Faber. more drag. We get one more drag. Well, Which might have to be a lift drag. drag. Yeah, if you ever what needed people to stay in an entangled position, <laughs> what a drag oh, it is! See, look, Nicky Ryan's not even going to let the heel go. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I oh. oh, this is bad. This is, and the thing is, your eyes going to roll, try yeah. and roll straight out back. At, you know, oh, you see, oh. <laughs> oh, they're going to. This is such a. So, you almost have to just say you have to restart here. The, 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 okay, the thing is, in a IBJJF, if you roll off the map on purpose, it's over. If, if you it's can't on stop purpose, it like but you had to roll that way to defend. So, but if that's you roll the correct off by way. accident, you restart them standing and give two points. Yeah, you can't do that here. But what you could do is tell the referees to bear this in mind yeah. when you're making your decision. Uh, that's for that not round. a bad suggestion, Mr. Strauss. Yeah. Same position. You want to judge next time? <laughs> it's fine as long as it's uh, in the proper defense of a submission. So yeah, toe but, holds but, and things but, like that is know, fine. And they restarted them really right next to the mat again. He's just going to roll again. Yeah. I would say I'm, I'm in favor oh, of restarting the drag. standing. There we oh, go. Full beautiful, drag. What beautiful Full drag. drag. That was beautiful. Oh, it's unfortunate because any way you finest. slice it, this could affect the, the, the situation. You're right, Faber. Trying to defend this uh, heel hook from Nicky Ryan. Inside heel he's, hook. Oh, he's out. free, yeah. He's cleared Whoa. the knee. Nicky Ryan trying to wrestle your right Faber on the way up. Oh, oh, oh he's, he's, getting, way he's getting <laughs> aggravated now. <laughs> Nick Brooks not knowing what the hell to do about this. <laughs> Almost forgetting that we're in a you know grappling what? match. He's pushing on the shoulders. I'm inclined to let this go. Oh, yeah, I'd let it go. There's absolutely He's nothing wrong with that. He's going for a Crab Maga um, throat jab. Oh, with the heavy hands. collar ties. That was a solid yeah. club. Nick, Nick is not happy about this. <laughs> on the hand on the neck, hands yeah. on the face. He's just trying to push him around, pull the crown of his head, uh, trying to upset the posture, but. You know what? If I was Uriah, I actually wouldn't want to be pissing off Nick <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> You know, I, I said this in the run-up to this build-up, okay? A lot of people, we always kind of use the narrative, Nicky Ryan, he's 17. But let me tell you, this, this kid... <laughs> it it this doesn't kid, matter. It doesn't matter. This, doesn't kid, is, matter. this kid is a, a fully grown, aggressive, 165-pound man. I know he's bounced down at, at 145. But, uh, yeah, he walks around at, like, 165. The, the, the kid is very capable of dealing with the physicality the Be this. of these kind of bouts. And Uriah Faber your eyes, getting upset with yeah. the referee. No, no, Nick's spot on here. You know, the, the fingers can't go near the eyes because then you risk eye pokes and cuts and yeah. stuff like that. It's side of the face, top of the head. Don't go in that area between the eyes. So Nicky Ryan trying to get some wrist grips going here. And he's using that knee wrestling style again, coming partially up in order to re-enter the legs. 6.45 left here. Uriah Faber almost accidentally passed the guard there. <laughs> the best kind. Nicky Ryan again <coughs> coming forward here. You know what? This is a really good learning experience for Nicky Ryan. Um, just, just to have the experience of dealing with someone who is just trying to rough you up, basically. Yeah, no I mean, attempts it's... to pass the guard. He's just trying to make you uncomfortable as possible. Um, I do think that Nicky at the moment definitely up on the scorecards. Uh, so far, I haven't seen anything from Uriah Faber that would make me think he has uh, not only just any way of taking a round, but any way of getting the submission as well. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Dan. He's really, uh, he's really trying to rough up Nicky, and it will be great for Nicky in the yeah. long run to go okay, through this. This is interesting. The elevation. Ryan gets him up, not able to drive that leg through the middle. So heavy with his hips. So yeah, he heavy. was very heavy with the hips and just kept his frame on Nicky's neck as well, stopped yeah. him getting under. Yeah, you, uh, at this point, well, to be honest, since the first 10 seconds of this match, Uriah Faber has only tried not to lose. He has yet to show anything that he's trying to actually win. Well, he could be waiting to try and get Nicky Ryan frustrated. 
Particularly with all those hits and then uh, capitalize when he stands up. He did just that's try to jump over to the guillotine. It's an interesting take on it. Yeah, that's the most offensive thing he's done all, all matches attempt that well, jumping guillotine over the top. Yeah, let's see if he can look for any more of those snap downs. We're going to go into the final five minutes here. Josh Palmer, Tom Barlow, and Daniel Strauss bringing you the last of tonight's action. From what Polaris 10. What a night we've had. We've had an incredible night. Oh, it's Good been a great show, an amazing show. Yeah, I'm going to be wrapping that up shortly with Dan Hardy after the conclusion of this bout. But Nicky Ryan looking to go back underneath. I love this half style of coming up to then create space to go back underneath. Mm. It's, it's really interesting to try and force some movement out of the opponent. You, you're seeing Uriah starting to try and jump towards that neck now, which he wasn't doing at the start of the match. So, like I said, it could be a good, his tactic to try and wear Nicky down with his aggression. You know, I'm really wondering if, if uh, sorry, when I talk to, to Nicky after this, if I uh, get some trash talk out of him. <laughs> I think he'd be warranted at this point. He's a pretty, uh, pretty respectful guy. You know, it's one of the things that it, he threatens so much from this position. You know, the wrist grips, the off-balance backwards, pulling forwards. It, it's just it's unlimited offense, which just makes it so hard to deal with. Uriah's opted to go one knee inside this time, which uh, is a new thing for him. Yeah, well, Nicky Ryan with both uh, in steps still on the inside here. Again, you see he's just trying to reach over that neck, trying to jump into that guillotine position with the chin strap. It's it's really not going to work unless Nicky legitimately puts everything into coming up for a uh, for, for, for a sit up into the butterfly guard or to try and wrestle sweep from this position. Otherwise, the chance of getting this guillotine, Uriah's going to have to overcommit a lot more than he is. And the reason he's not doing that is because he's so worried about getting caught in those leg entanglements. Yeah, although to be fair to him, he survived an immensely deep, uh, well, deep inside position. Wow, well, you know what? A bit of controversy there. There's a bit of controversy. <laughs> yeah, he su that, that he survived, fair. and you know he was in a bad position when they restarted. But you cannot restart. <laughs> you no, know, you, you can't. In the same it, position that so you tough. left it. So Nicky Ryan again trying to find the grip behind the knee, allow him to pummel through. You know, had there been a case to come on top now. Oh. Had there been a cage wall on that heel hook attempt and you're uh, unable to roll out, who knows? Oh, and Nicky Ryan, oh, got the, got the grip elevated through. Oh, and he sits back down just, I thought Uriah for a second might be able to hit a double there. Yeah, I was hoping for a blast double. The only thing he's hitting at the moment is uh, Nicky Ryan's face. Yeah, really trying to rough up Nicky Ryan here. And to be fair, you know, we, we honestly thought that was something he might do, you know, try and turn it into a scrap. Yeah, we didn't think literally, though. No, well, we, we use it metaphorically, don't we? We knew he was going to try and push the pace as well, but really it's, it's, it's Nicky Ryan pushing the pace. Nicky's inverted now. He could have a sniffle leg there. Let's have a look. Two and a half left in this one. Both title fights so far going the distance. The third may be... Nice little hip switch in the air from Uriah yeah, just so to counter that elevation. This is two or three times that Nicky Ryan's managed to elevate Uriah Faber. What is it that Faber's doing, guys, that's managing to shut the attack down? Well, he's just turning his hips in the air and it's killing the butterfly hooks and he's able just to bounce off them. You know, he, he's fought for so long and wrestled for so long that gives you a base and a relationship with gravity that seems almost impossible. He's just able to get into the correct position to uh, stop Nicky from getting all the way underneath him. Oh, he's and jumping, he's got that chin strap now as well. Oh, it just slips out. That was probably the, the deepest bite that Uriah Faber's had. Nowhere near, but still deeper than he had before. Yeah, Nicky's now into this half butterfly position. Well, Uriah's uh, stapled that other leg to the ground. One and a half minutes left of this match. Still, you know, definitely a lot more in the last uh, round of this uh, of this title fight where Uriah's gone for some submissions, but it's really barely gone for submission hasn't really been able to get anywhere through oh Nicky attempt. Ryan's well he just couldn't quite get uh, the bite above the kneecap slipped a little bit low half guard with that single butterfly here back to people also need to understand how difficult it is to grapple with someone when you've been going for yeah. 15 minutes is... bare chested yeah. Nicky Ryan looking for a triangle entry briefly I mean his, his triangle armbar series is phenomenal we saw him just take Phil Harris out with that but yeah but this is not Phil Harris not Phil this Harris. is a very very experienced uh, fighter not to say that Phil Harris isn't but you know realistically you're, you're right favor on a favor on a, on a much much higher level there yeah one of the things we wondered outside of the leg locks was, was would Nicky Ryan be able to find a route to the back it's just 
Uriah Faber is just essentially just a rock at this point. He, he, you can't really do anything to him apart from that one very close leg lock attempt. Can't really do anything to him, but at the same time, a rock's not going to do anything to you, yeah. which is kind of the story of this it's match. It's incredibly hard to fight someone that's not really doing anything apart yeah. from maintaining He's posture. He's not opening up. Yeah. Tries to dive over once more. Ten second clacker comes in. We're going to see the match out here. Nicky not... Ryan is inside. He'll look. With less than five seconds left, he's bridging in, and the time expires what... as Nicky Ryan gets a final entry. Yeah, what a great way to finish that. Really put a full stop on that match for Nicky. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think Nicky Ryan's obviously going to take the decision here. Yeah, no but, doubt. <laughs> but. Uh... You know, what a, as you say, what an experience for him to go through, you know, Uriah Faber trying to rough you up, yep. trying to deal with that kind of base and wrestling constantly from that position. Yeah, it's an excellent experience for Nicky, you know, it's going to help him in just mental toughness to go through someone collar tying you and slapping you in the face for 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to be interested to see what Uriah Faber has to say after this. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the replays here. So this was uh, one of the entries from Nicky Ryan. Guys, talk us through this. I'm going to go uh, talk for the winner. Yeah, he used that butterfly guard just to elevate Uriah and then backstep over the other leg and start entangling it. And as soon as he stole that heel, he started to bite into the heel hook. Uh, Uriah Faber didn't really look to know what to do in this situation um, and rolled out of bounds, which is obviously a good tactic to start freeing yep. up the position. And then from there we got that restart and Faber was able just to push out and then defend Nicky's takedown attempt. Yeah, a few times Nicky looking to turn uh, some of those scrambles into a takedown attempt, but he's realistically never was going to put Uriah on his back in that way. Uh, just scrambling back to the feet, uh, Nicky pulling guard the entire time and just trying to work the entire time off the back. Yeah, this Uriah. is probably Uriah's best attempt here, just diving over for that and chin strap. And even that, there was, it was nowhere near. Yeah, nowhere Nicky near. easily defended it. And this is just the end of the match. Nicky again a diving really nice on that setup. heel hook. Really yeah, nice beautiful. Setup. And Uriah just survived until the end. So let's go over to our announcer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, for this championship contest, our sponsor, Tyrone Sullivan from Canababe, will be presenting the championship belt. This contest goes the distance, and we go to your judges. Their decision, your winner, by unanimous decision, and still, your Polaris featherweight champion, 